This question is asking us to find the domain and the range of each of these three functions. So to figure out the domain and range for part A, what I did is use a graphing calculator and I graphed it. And this is what the, the graph looked like. Something like this. It's not a perfect, accurate sketch, but that's the general shape. Now we have to figure out what the domain is. And the domain is like the interval of all the possible x values, or the input values of this graph. So basically, how far to the left can we go, and how far to the right can we go? Well, I'm going to look at my graph on desmos.com. I graphed it already. And this is what it looks like. Now again, we want to figure out how far to the left can we go, because we want our lowest x value. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out real far here. And I'm going to uh, click this part of my graph, and it looks like I have an x value of 0. And then I'm going to move my, my point this way. I'm going to hold it down, and it looks like I go from negative 1 to about negative 2. There's some decimals in there too, but you can see it going lower and lower and lower. So um, if we kept going farther and farther to the left, it would go towards negative infinity. It wouldn't stop at all. And then as we move from our from our left to the right, it looks like we have a, a negative 1.77 here. Let's keep going to our right. We eventually get back to x equals 0, x will equal 1, x will equal 2 right there. So if we go farther to our right, it looks like we have a positive infinity boundary there. So back to our rough sketch of the graph here, it looks like we could go all the way to our left and all the way to the right. So our domain can be written in interval notation here from negative infinity to positive infinity and whenever we use the infinity signs we use parentheses with those. Now our range is looking at our output or our y values so how uh, far low can we go or like going downwards and then how high can we get our, our y values to be. Now this is where Desmos is going to come in handy. Um, I'm going to zoom in right here because we want to look for our lowest possible y value. So I, I got my point here and I, I moved down all the way to this point here. This is the lowest part of our graph. So our lowest y value it looks like is going to be a negative 5 right there. And then if we're looking for our highest possible y value, well let's zoom out and how high can we go? Right here we're at negative 3 for our y, negative 2, negative 1, we're here we're at zero and then if we keep going higher and higher and higher it looks like our y's are going to increase forever towards positive infinity so our lowest one that we could have was negative five right here and our highest is positive infinity so I could go back here and say the range is going to go from negative five and actually because we're including a negative five because that's a part of our range we're going to use a bracket with that that shows we're including that number and then our top boundary is going to be positive infinity, and then again with infinity we use parentheses. So that's that. In part B we have g of x, and I graph this again in desmos.com, and a rough sketch of that graph is going to look like this. And we're going to start off by finding the domain. Well, in this case, we don't even have to look at the desmos graph because if you look at the rough sketch and for our domain, remember we want to figure out how far to the left can we go. It looks like our left value, or I'm sorry, our x values keep going towards negative infinity because it continues this way, right? So our lowest possible x value, our boundary would be negative infinity. And then as we go to the right here, it looks like it keeps continuing forever to our right, so that's going to be positive infinity as well. So no real need for the uh, the graph right there um, on Desmos. Um, so for the range, what's our lowest output or lowest y value going to be? Well, an arrow is going this way, so it's going to go down towards negative infinity. And then what's our highest y value? Well, we're going up towards positive infinity. And that's going to be our range. So our range is all real numbers. Any number will work for the range. Same thing for the domain. This is going to be all real numbers too. On to part C. Um, this graph, I actually went ahead and did it in Desmos as well. And here's the rough sketch. And just by looking at this graph, we could figure out what the domain is. Be 
because as we follow our graph to the left, because our x values are going to be decreasing this way, it looks like we could keep going forever towards positive infinity. And as we move to the right, as our x values get higher, it looks like we could keep going forever to positive infinity. So the domain is going to be all real numbers for, for this function right here, h of x. Now the range is going to be a little bit more trickier. We want to figure out our lowest y value, so our lowest output value. So as we look downwards, it's pretty clear that our graph is going to continue going down forever. So that's going to be negative infinity right here. But as we look to see how high our graph goes, so what's the largest output value or the largest y value, it looks like we top off right around here, right? So we need to figure out what that point is. That's when I go back to Desmos to figure that out. So here's the Desmos graph, and I'm going to call up my points here in my parabola, and I'm going to move to this part right here, and it looks like the y value right here is 1.25. So that's going to be the highest possible y value on my graph. So now that we know that this part is going to be a y of 1.25, it looks like my graph could be topped out at 1.25. That's going to be the highest part of the range, and we use a bracket there because we're going to include that number in our range. Now, if we look at each one of these um, functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x, it looks like all the domains are all real numbers. So unless you have some crazy constraint on a polynomial, it looks like the domain is going to usually be all real numbers. Um, for an odd degreed uh, function like this, g of x, it looks like our n behavior is going to be going in opposite directions uh, in, in terms of our y. So it looks like the range is always going to be all real numbers as well when our degree is going to be odd. But when our degree is even, so like this is a degree of 4 and this is a degree of 2, it looks like there's going to be either a bottoming out that happens right here, like this, or it's going to like top out, which is what happened right here. So the range will change whenever you have a degree of 2. I'm sorry, not a degree of 2, but a degree of 2, 4, 6, any type of even number. Um, again, barring there's no crazy constraint on the polynomial.